why data integrity as i mentioned so data integrity is absolutely critical in the pharmaceutical industries to make sure that the end product meets all the required quality standards data integrity is critical to the design implementation usage of, usage of any system that stores process and retrieve important data do you believe that any of our pharmaceutical product manufacture without any documentation many time in the industries the people are making fun of that what is a gmp so we generate more paper right is actually it is a good manufacturing practices but many people mention generate more paper so generate more paper means what generate more data so data is part and parcel of our life now the data is proper data is accurate data is auditable all these will will discuss in this uh, coming uh, presentation so it's not like that data integrity uh, many times there is a myth that data integrity is all, all, uh, only in china and in uh, in india and only in pharmaceuticals data in integrity is everywhere you know the example about the volkswagen that the emission issues and what happened they have to recall the cars and what is the consequences they have lost the customer trust right same way there is a you know what is deep regret over japan drug trial scandals what happened the studies were later found to have contain falsified data why people are doing this i don't know people wants to do this manipulation to save cut the product or they want to do the manipulation because of the mindset they want to save the money so there are many things which are involved into such type of activities but ultimately what they have lost the trust they have lost the trust of the regulators they have uh, they have to report uh, repeated this the product is delayed and there is a revenue loss the renbuxi case everybody is aware about i don't want to discuss more on the renbuxi it is ultimately converted to the consent decree and then the companies itself is vanished and now it becomes an pharma one more thing which i want to discuss the data integrity in not in pharma i don't know whether many people must have seen the uh, movie called pink which is from the amitav and then there is a one incidents where he is mentioned in the court of law about the fir was not filed by the police of the those three ladies and then back dated fir was filed and then it was identified and presented into the court of law so it's true that data integrity is everywhere not in the pharma so data integrity is the mindset the process procedures and systems so what regular regulator says like now let's go come back to the pharma we are in the pharma we will focus on the pharma in the pharma what are the data integrity what are the data what are the definitions how it is controlled what are the cultures what uh, what are the frameworks how we want to control because data integrity is there into the paper or into the electronic systems because over the years uh, if people mention that i have put the hvlc into the systems and i have put the control my data integrity is controlled no it's not correct i will i will tell you why so before that what regulator says about data integrity so there are various uh, uh, chapters i don't want to go into those uh, regulations by the fda by the isp themselves they will generate um, Uh, publish the guidance the mhri gx data integrity guidance is published so i think all the people who are in this webinars are aware about the all the guidances the ipa data reliability guidance ipa you must be aware that is indian pharmaceutical alliance wherein there is a quality forum in that quality forum there are six companies big companies and uh, those six big companies are generating the guidances for the Indian industries. 
So coincidentally, I was the chairperson for the preparing the data reliability guidance uh, in IPN. I think you should look into that. It's really, really good. It's not that because I, I was involved, but it is really good and practical to implement. In the, uh, in the WHO also, there are TR696 and uh, guidance on good data and record management practices. So there, is, there are various uh, regulations uh, for the data integrity, and it is evolving process. Uh, regulators are continu continuously evolving them. They are giving the new and new insight about that based on what they are findings and based on their experiences. So there is always a dilemma uh, whether data integrity is urgent or important. I think it is both. It's urgent also, it's important also. So now coming to the importance of data integrity, I always uh, I uh, mention in my opening remark, <coughs> data has always been important in pharmaceutical manufacturing research because it is part and parcel of that manufacturing processes without the data uh, you cannot have the historical data you cannot have the it is mainly to generate that data is uh, mainly because of to the regulations uh, and mainly because of the historical data and uh, in the future if something has gone wrong you can do the review and you do proper investigation and you you can take the proper corrective preventive actions so the cost of poor data integrity is what is big is big really big so there are regulatory actions, including warning letters, import alerts, prosecutions, and reputational damage, as I mentioned, uh, it has happened to the many companies. The cost of the reactive regulatory compliance is daunting and erodes the credibility of the customers, employees, reduce time to the market and future strategic options. You know that in the uh, warning letter or into the consent degree type of thing, your new product approvals are been withheld. If so, then what is the cost of the compliance? Is big. Nobody can nobody can image what are the hidden costs in that. There are missed opportunities like a company may miss a critical opportunity for new product development, or customer needs that a competitor with a more mature understanding of data may capitalize upon. Then loss of revenue is which I already mentioned to you. So. I just want, I want to touch base with you about how many warning letters have been given due to data integrity. I don't want to give the name of the company. I don't want to uh, uh, mention about this, but uh, it's good that uh, we should know that uh, which company is having and what type of uh, this one. So one of the company like uh, they have aborted and deleted analysis in HVLC. Now, uh, which is not justified. It's not that you cannot abort or uh, delete any, uh, you cannot delete obviously, but you, you can abort the analysis. If you want to abort the analysis, you should have a proper justification, whether it is because of power failure, whether it's because of some interruptions, whether because of the malfunction of the HPLC or uh, temporary malfunctioning, something like that. But you should have the justification for the aborting the uh, run into the uh, HVLC. The data are not complete. The audit trials of instruments or multiple location additional testing that were not reported. So uh, in this company, uh, there were multiple occasional additional testing. So that is called a testing and the compliance. So those are not complete data without any deviations, without any justifications, they have done that. And then they have intentionally mention about test one and test two, which is not identified. So please be aware that regulators are more smarter than us. If you want to do something, they, they know what we are doing and they are smarter, they can 100% going to identify. One of the Australian company like inaccurate data reported, like uh, CAFU reported is more than 80, very actual, they were too numerous to count. So, Few of the examples are into the HVLC, but major examples recently, which is identified in the microbiology. So, and, and the data which are having the evidences are good to control, but data where there is no, there is no evidences are 
always a vulnerable data there may be orphan data so those are the data where we should have uh, the system wherein either we have some documentary evidences or do our checker system something like that so in particular case they mention because there is no uh, evidences of those pagar um, uh, plates so they mention atcf you can regulator for how this few numerous to count there are three consecutive identity test failure not reported and found test reported as it passed like testing and complies it which i have mentioned to you microbial plate counts not reported and plates destroyed so there are there may be a many plates which may be having the more counts but without any uh, reconciliation they have destroyed the plates so nowadays what regulator says uh, and they comes they directly go into the microbiological lab without any notice and they start looking on into the chambers and in the chambers they start looking to the uh, what we call the plates and in the plates uh, they uh, look into the reconciliations in the reconciliations they look your data um, which is generated which are the primary data into the log books and then they count the colonies also they do the reconciliation of the plates which are incoming plates which is come then they do the how plate how many plates are there they uh, physically count those plates then they count the plates which are in the incubator they count the plates which are under the destruction and they see the physically the number of colonies now uh, zero colonies to good to go to believe they see the, your trend and during the uh, audit period if you are if you have the zero colonies and then your trend shows a 6 7 8 9 10 10 they start doubting you then they start doubting about the tendency you have done something wrong in this so be aware that uh, that whatever is uh, written or whatever is there please write into your systems and then try to identify the root cause and try to improve on those no investigation of bi findings like data deletion sample trial injection missing audit trials something like that so these are the few of the examples into the china company deleted initial chromatographic injection during batch release testing so all these are now uh, people were not aware so many people are they stop the audit trial so now auditors are asking okay, why you uh, stop uh, close the audit trials you have to auditor has to be open and it has to be activated you cannot deactivate the audit trial if you deactivate then they, uh, there is a cause of the data activity so data not complete like same while injection twice but first attempt not reported so these are the few examples uh, uh, of the warning letter where the data integrity type of things these are the examples which we should be aware about and we should have our own process to control this like inaccurate data recorded for compression machine process parameter outside limit values then ois results not reported in water content and kf and sa test on the auto titrator only pass results reported so uh, now people are good into the chromatograph havoc systems now they have gone up to the uh, e signatures but non chromatograph havoc system what non chromatograph havoc systems may not be hooked up to the servers non chromatic systems are not having the data that there are uh, there are no archival systems it's not going the server so there is a possibility that you can delete the runs and you can uh, reanalyze and so and so forth but auditors are also so experts they can go into the windows path, uh, pathways and can go into the detail and identify where the problem may be so be aware about that back dating i always uh, mention about one of the example non pharma but back dating is a is a mindset is a, is the culture is the attitude issue but why back dating we are doing we, may, we will discuss that uh, there has to be some controls on those is non contemporaneous data recording now this is a very uh, burning point as on that uh, into the industries that many people ask the question if the operator is doing the cleaning then how, how he will going to write and the thing same same time same way about the he is doing the cleaning so there are various ways uh, this called as a gdp good documentation practices like do or checker witness by perform by there are many such uh, examples are available wherein you design your system 
to go away for the non contemporaneous uh, data recording systems in the correct data recorded like my group account we have already discussed deleted of electronic data which we have already discussed that not integrated net not reported to chrome archive system so there are uh, there are always a possibility that uh, you manually integrate the peak by which the additional peak or the degradation product peak is been merged and then you can do that but manual integration is a crime please don't do that also uh, stopping the uh, or prohibiting some integration peaks are also the crime please don't do that data will reproduce multiple times and only final attempt reported play with the parameters stop don't document this is a big this is a big in um, uh, especially in indian industries what the regulator is looking at you know that that uh, suddenly uh, they came and they see that uh, you have the paper shredder document or logbook somebody must be having the paper shredding logbooks and they see that and one fine morning they uh, instead of the routine 15 20 50 uh, documents are uh, been shredded instead of that suddenly 100 200 300 500 documents are getting shredded so they will start doubting suddenly why so turn documents in trash uh, is the one big item what we and uh, especially in my company what we have done that you know we have created the lock and key dustbins in that uh, we have created that no document will be torn the entire page which has to be destroyed has to be put into the dustbin which is lock and key and we have created the logbook in that logbook which document is to be uh, trashed or uh, shred will be mentioned in that system then end of the day or next day morning QA in charge who is responsible for this will verify all the active uh, document which are into the trash uh, on the dustbin which are required to be destroyed and then they identify and see that it is a justifiable destruction it is not justifiable destruction and then they give the clearance to go for the trash then that entire document is take out put into the plastic bag and put uh, tie with the thread a plastic uh, fastener that plastic fastener is having the number that number is mentioned into the logbook and then once then they go to the shredder shredder is having its own logbook they put their number and then after shredding that shredded paper is collected into the another bag and then it is tied with the another plastic fastener and then which is having also the number and then the number of the uh, intake document and shredded document has been tallied and then it then it will go for the uh, incineration so this is how we have managed uh, the entire torn document systems and i think many industries are having their own systems but torn document mine well is a hot topic for the regulators as i mentioned shredding of the document without traceability how we we have overcome those things so now coming to the uh, uh, what is uh, data meaning? So people, many people mention about Alcoa. So now there is the Alcoa Plus. So what is Alcoa Plus? That is CCEA. So Alcoa CCEA. <coughs> Sorry. So what is the uh, Alcoa? That is uh, attributable, legible. Everybody aware, but I'm just touch bit on this. Contemporaneous, original, accurate complete, consistent, enduring, and available. So for one data, you can understand how, how much things we want to do. And as I mentioned, data is part and partial of our systems. We cannot go away with that. So we can also, we can also go away with the Alcoa CCEA. We have to have. That is why we have to have our own systems, whether it is electronic or paper-based. Now, just putting the electronic or paper-based system, whether we have achieved the zero data integrity? No. There are the framework, there are the culture, there are the training, there are the people who are involved into these activities. So it is a top-down and bottom-up systems. 
top down in the sense whether his management is willing to do this and bottom up is that that your people are trained to handle this so is a top down and bottom up approach by which putting the culture in place identify the risk you can able to achieve up to the 90 95% i guaranteed you when i experienced that 100% eradication of data may not be possible but you should have the system that where anything goes wrong somewhere because <clears throat> you have the multiple plants thousands of employees are working you should have your own systems to see that something has gone wrong somebody is doing the mistakes whether it is it uh, intentional or whether it is by mistake or uh, that is a uh, uh, attitude you should be able to identify that so what is this alcoa means this is attributable it is like a traceable to the person generating the data it is very clear data must be readable clear and permanent record at the time activities perform is very difficult i 100% agree when you design your own system to to achieve this original like first recording like is a primary primary data secondary data type of things actual data which is correct to pull and free from the errors which is accurate now what is the plus that is ccea so complete so nothing is omitted data set having all data and relevant metadata is there what is many of consistent data data date time stamps in sequential manner and consistently recorded it is a consistent what is enduring data recorded on on authorized media maintainable maintainable for retention period like you know that uh, and then you must have also face the same problem people are writing something in the loose paper into the not gmp paper not gmp document people are writing somewhere on the table people are writing on uh, on the hand and then they are transferring this data to the uh, original uh, gmp data it's not correct whatever the data first time you return is the primary data and the primary data cannot be written into the unauthorized media okay that's the end of available what is meaning available data available for review and inspection throughout the retention period so many times what happened that uh, uh, because we are generating the lots of lots of paper and then we don't have the proper archiving systems and then since we don't have the proper archiving systems so the uh, these data or the documents are lost and one fine morning you want to do the some investigation on one fine morning some auditor ask and ask for the some data almost 3 years back data and it's not available this data not available means you have not performed the duty period that is how the regulator looks at so data should be available and then now what regulator is looking at that within 5 minutes just like that bring the data so your archival system has to be so robust that it is archived or it is retrieved within no time some other important terminologies uh, you are aware about this but i want to touch base like static data versus the dynamic data like paper record pdf document electronic images these are the static data versus the chromatographic electronic records these are the dynamic data this dynamic data refers to the records in dynamic format that allows for an interactive relationship between the user and the record content and the static data is a format refers to the fixed data document which allows no or very limited interaction between the user and the record content and everything is okay like static data dynamic data but please focus on your primary data so primary record and secondary record like electronic data in laboratory software manufacturing scada paper print out from ph meter these are all the primary data and what is secondary data because there is always a confusion between the primary record and secondary record of the secondary data the secondary data the record which does not take primacy in case where data data 
collected and retain a current concurrently by more than one method fail to confirm. Like printout taken from electronic data in laboratory software manufacturing SCADA. So these are the printouts. So these are the secondary because the primary data is generated into the SCADA at the time of activity. At the time of activity, whichever the data is generated is the primary data. And then printout taken from that uh, electronic system, so from that is the secondary data. The critical data and non critical data. Uh, according to me, everything is critical, but there are something which we can discuss, which are the non-critical data, like cleaning record of non-GMP areas, can be considered as a non-critical, but there are always argument and uh, difference of opinion, but this is what I, I think, what I mentioned here, this is non-critical data. <coughs> so there are a few examples, very, very interesting examples in industries for the uh, Alcoa plus plus. So what happened into the attributable, uh, attributable into the uh, pharmaceutical industries? What happened? So people share the passwords. They share the login ID. There are generic users <coughs> accounts. Data recorded by other than the actual doers. Sign dead missing on document which is not corrected as per the GDPR. All the doers involved in activity are not traceable from the document. So I, I will give you uh, some some example in this. What auditor is doing now, you know that, or regulators they are doing, you know that. They take the batch record, or they take the uh, some uh, your seal forms. They take the some laboratory documents, and they they see the signature and time and stem. And then, then they call for the, what we call is uh, uh, your uh, entry uh, register. Majority of the people must be having the, uh, your uh, entry into the system, which is electronic uh, in and out. So regulators are doing in and out uh, timing checks against the data which are generated into GMP. So majority of time, may, not majority of time, sorry, is many times they identify that person as left for the day and they have still signed the documents. So mind well, please, you, you should have your own system in which such type of mistakes are being avoided. Legible data must be readable, clear and permanent. So paper data get, Headed upon storage. You know the most common thing here, like the thermal paper. People forget to take the photocopy of the thermal paper, put in the archive, and then one fine morning, no data is there. So ensure that okay, your thermal paper, you always take the photocopy and also keep the thermal paper with that. Manual data recording is not readable. Uh, my uh, handwriting also is not that good, but what practices which we have mentioned, at least legible re uh, recording should be there. If it is not legible, it's not readable, it can be perceived something something else in some way that can be considered as a data integrity also. So try to write, uh, write into the uh, uh, proper and clear way of writing don't try to write, uh, write in the cross down to the capital. It will be the easiest way to do this. Multiple overwriting on recorded data. So this is a common, uh, so I don't want to go in more. No overwriting is required. If you don't want to do overwriting, just cross it, sign it, date it. This is then it, why you overwrite it. Correction on recorded data, which is not legible. So that is, if that is so, then it, is directly considered as a data integrity. This is a big ticket item into data integrity contemporaneous entries. As I mentioned, one example about the cleaning uh, operator, how we can do the contemporaneous entry into the cleaning logs. So uh, data are not recorded at the time of activity, data entered based on the assumption at the end of the shift. 
operation time and operator biometric entry every time mismatch i have excellent to that recorded data corrected which is not as per the actual data generation written time so many times it happens we are in the industries we are not perfect if we are perfect 100% perfect then this too good to believe so mistakes happens let it be but there should, there should be your own procedures so recorded data corrected which is as per the actual data generation and date and time so if you want to do some correction instead of 10 if you want to write 10 point uh, 10 30 am you want to write 10 36 am so you should have you should cross it out and write the correct time but in that case you should have some supporting data from uh, some other documentation no other system should be there by which you can give the reference that based on this you have done the correction but retrospectively you cannot do any correction on that in that case whether there is no uh, retrospective data available or correction done then you to justify that you see you have to do the deviation and impact assessment on those time overlap between two activities by common door <laughs> this is another very classic example <laughs> one person are two different uh, time uh, at a time so uh, regulators are so uh, they are based on their learnings uh, about all this they become more and more smarter so they take one bmr here one bmr here one bmr here then they cross verify and see that that the common doers are not there in the three different places at a time advanced entries you cannot do advanced entries obviously and back dating we already have discussed in that what is original like first recording like destruction of cgmp documentation you cannot destroy it happens uh, many times that uh, especially in the if you are in the api industry or especially into your uh, in uh, tablet manufacturing when you are doing the batch record writing something uh, as spill on that so please keep that document with you and then you should have the procedure to issue the another page on another uh, form from the QA should authorize that with the stamp and time and justification rewritten but original document which are the primary data cannot be destroyed deletion of electronic data and audit trials error logs you cannot do that documents are not truthful like rewriting of records in many industries uh, it is unfortunate that there are two separate records are being maintained so avoid that if it is so failure to have computerized system and sufficient controls to prevent authorized access change one second sorry failure to have computerized system with sufficient controls to prevent authorized access or change to the data here what happens is that uh, uh, it happens that my punch card has been taken by somebody and then they punch and then they uh, somebody is not there and then uh, when there is a cross tally then people are not there some of the unauthorized access are been given to the people like uh, especially um, uh, my colleagues may be there from the uh, uh, aseptic uh, manufacturing uh, companies so in the going into the sterile area we we have to have the either the paper logbook entries or we have to have the biometrics the biometrics would generate its own entry exit logs so unauthorized access given uh, without any qualification of the individual it can that has to be ordered and uh, in that case uh, if it is so then then original uh, first recording will be a questionable alteration correction in paper document in unauthorized manners like somebody has altered the cpp critical process parameter without any authorization without justification or without validation modification of electronic data in authorized unauthorized manner so these are the few uh, examples which are happening in the industries which is i have tried to give the examples 
what is accurate like i mentioned actual data which is correct truthful and free from errors like data recorded without actually performing so these are the example so without without performing data people sits on the table and then they fill the data based on the history or based on the knowledge actual data not reported like what read observe is not recorded so uh, they record whatever is mentioned in batch record the range is given 25 to 45 into the reaction monitoring systems actual data uh, because of whatever the reason the data shows that let's say it's a 50 when they have recorded within the range so it is not accurate which is a data integrity directly predetermined data recording so uh, like in the advanced data recording or predetermined data recording that is based on the experience it is going to happen like that and just record like this so these are not accurate data now if you do not have the accurate data you have the serious problem one is data integrity obviously but in the future in the in the future if something gone gone wrong into the system or process or product you will not never able to identify the root cause the complete that, uh, what do you mean complete like data set having all data and relevant metadata nothing is omitted what are the examples fail to ensure that the complete data derived from all activity tests performed so many times um, people have become selective they do the selective data archive and then they will not do the complete data many times the failures are not reported like these are the very common examples about the compression machines into the tablet some examples into the weight variation into the injection some examples that uh, your reaction monitoring temperature or pressure is not maintained so those are those failures are not reported they would have they do just the corrections and period they don't report. trial testing is not reported trial testing obviously is not allowed if you want to do the trial testing then it, it is called as a hypothesis study now you have the oos into your uh, laboratory now you have to do the investigation so to do the investigation you have the, your own checklist then then you uh, in the you <clears throat> there is no root cause identified based in your checklist now you have to start doing your hypothesis so you have to take some trials so trial is a crime as for me don't use the trial use the word hypothesis like same vial same injections same solution uh, in different vials same filling so all these hypotheses have been done for the investigation purpose but those are not reported so that is not complete data reprocessing of chromatography data are not reported so uh, you identify uh, you process the data, chromatographic data because of the any issues or malfunctions the chromatic data is not coming properly then you reprocess it you change the, your uh, parameter you change the integration and you reprocess when you have not recorded so this is not complete data and then you play with the parameter i have given one example about the impurity where you do the manual integration you play with this parameter which is not correct so these are not the complete data <coughs> consistent like data 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 and stamp and sequential manner this is consistent so what as example like electronic data not generated in sequential date and time manner i already explained in uh, some of the example paper data not recorded as per sequence of activity executed so uh, some of the activity uh, this is a problem about the designing our batch records or designing our format like uh, you have the parallel activities which are going on now this parallel activity now base record is sequential now how the poor operator can do this activity which is a uh, parallel activity activity and the base record is there one place and then other parallel activity is going in other way so designing your uh, documentation system and process is also critical to avoid the such type of problems different recording practices followed for the same activity so somebody will uh, cross somebody will cross and uh, write somebody put not an applicable somebody put just dash so there are many as various gdp practices good document practices available that we that is to be put into uh, in the system for the consistency 
enduring uh, this is i love this enduring and i have given many examples uh, about this uh, the uh, data primary data written on the hand primary data written on the newspapers primary data written on the unofficial notebook something like that so data recorded on media which is not maintainable throughout the retention period that is what i was trying to mention that what is meaning of enduring these are the examples for the electronic electronic data stored in standalone individual systems hard drives and pen drives so this electronic data should be stored uh, throughout this the life cycle what is available i explained in uh, my previous uh, discussion uh, data loss not available within the retention period and failure to present document or review during the inspection these are considered as a non available data some of the case study i mentioned uh, but i want to touch base here um, with the example like timing of the line clearance is prior to the person entry into the area i already have touched base about that the person is left for the day and then his uh, entries are there like start time of the line mentioned is 9 10 and the line clearance was given at 9 8 however the person who provided the line clearance enter in the area at 9 12 as per the record of personal entry exit into the building area i have given that example but this is the these are some live examples which are happening in the industries in the accurate vendor has failed filled the raw data in several calibration reports and he discarded the copy another copy with the raw data was available in respective records so mind well uh, we are training our own people for the data integrity are we training for the vendors please do that qualify a vendor there has to be a vendor qualification and inspection and uh, clearance program wherein the vendor should follow your own data integrity policy process they should follow your own sops and then vendors are doing some gmp activity somebody should, should accompany them in <clears throat> some case study like destruction of print out uh, about it cycle and no documentation like half an hour late after uh, starting the autoclave cycle operator realized that there is a air leakage from the gasket so he aborted the cycle and restart the cycle he destroyed the printout of the aborted cycle so these are these are the live examples which i want to share with you available like it was further revealed that an error occurred regarding this not having enough space on the same date hence no audit trail was available So, like deleted data found in the recycle bin of the computerized system associated with the manufacturing equipment. So, this is one thing which you have to be very, very clear. What auditor is doing? You know that you should you should have the uh, desktop policies. And uh, what is a desktop policy in the computer? Which are the GMP computers? So there are there should not be any recycle bin. There should not be any deleted. There should be nothing. by which uh, auditor will open the recycle bin and identify tons of the data which are deleted you should have your own programs you should have the file servers into your server there is a file path it is a uh, password protected all the gmp data are stored there if you want to do the changes there has to be uh, uh, another file wherein you put that original file there you do the correction in the draft mode do the uh, final approval and move that file to the original path where the, your data is stored and then delete the draft so some type of uh, sops are available by which you can avoid the deletion of the data and goes into the uh, your <coughs> trash bins into the computer so many many times uh, auditor finds the gmp data which may be a draft which may be a program which may be your schedules which may be your uh, some corrections on into the recycle bin now it may not be a data integrity but there may be a possibility that something in that recycle bin will not marry or match with your original data then then it will be a big issue for you
like uh, what is a complete like filter integrity test runs due to instruction errors and manual manually aborted not reported in batch record user logbooks on verifying the generated electronic data it was identified that instrument errors were neither recorded in bmr nor in the respective instrument logbook so as i mentioned it is not complete data contemporaneous i have mentioned a few examples for and uh, this is the challenge for the industry as on that about how to maintain the contemporaneous entry where the operators they themselves are doing the activity how they can write the activity so there are policies which call as a good document practices where there is a uh, definitions for the performer witness by review by check by something like that so this is another chapter by itself uh, some day sometimes i can take up that chapter separately if you wish so these are the fda example which they have given into the their presentation like one colony not counted there one colony not counted so these are the various example which is given into their uh, presentation so this is a courtesy of uh, fda so context slides from grade b area sft corridor for autoclave ground hood of the clean room retrieved from the waste bins in the dust bins uh, the picture tells the thousand words itself the media fill wires which are heavy in the growth are been rejected okay so we have discussed all these examples everything the definitions and all that so i don't want to uh, make you fear about all this but how to achieve this so there are ways and uh, means and then it's not that okay, you are not aware about all this industries has gone long way from data integrity to now coming to the almost end to the data integrity and now auditors are looking after something else so what we, we should have to control all this what we have discussed about the alcoa plus plus all these examples which i have given to you to overcome those issues so what we should have like there is a three things people process and technology i am a fan of this word i love this word people process and technology entire systems of pharma is depend on this in the gmp system there are the three main pillar people process and technology so in the people like this behavioral control i mentioned that whether it is a attitude issues whether it is a ignorance whether it is a uh, behavior whether it is a complexity whether it is a culture we have identified it or whether it is a personal integrity in the procedures whether your your policies and sops how you design i have given one example two parallel activity and one bmr how the poor operator can write two parallel activity at a time in quantum physics then dedicated di team it is in my company i have created the dedicated data integrity team their job is nothing to do but other than the data integrity continuous reviews and audits personal practices practices we have to see and go on the four we call as a gamba rounds and see that what are the personal practices whether those personal practices are because of the behavior or because of the processes and complexity you have to see your manual controls you have to see the and you have to continuously do, do your di audit and compliance in technical technical controls like it systems it system has gone long way long long way into the data uh, data integrity mitigation plans and i am really really uh, thankful to my it processes and systems in my company where they have really created the good environment and systems so here an auditor is looking for the who are your administrator whether the qa themselves or manufacturing themselves or engineering themselves or qc themselves are administrator who control your passwords who change your password who allocate your passwords who manage your passwords so all this is now is depend on the it 
so there has to be a independent person who is your administrator who manage all the it process which is independent from your quality department or manufacturing and operations upgradation and implementation there there has to be a continuous improvement program in it yesterday good is not today remain good today there is something new you have to be continuously watch you have to have your own intelligence systems you need to improve on those data security and data privacy that is the one new word which uh, you have to have and then electronic controls like <clears throat> we have done ex excellent job as a pharma company in quality control we have the now the chromelin server or we have the other servers we have the server based equipments we have the pull data rather than push data then we have the electronic signatures papers are getting reduced there is integration with the instruments so there are many things has happened now what fda is uh, regular is looking at what about your manufacturing and engineering equipment so now people have started focusing on plc now plc is cada or hmi they want the part, part alone compliance so whether it is possible to replace everything in no your machine are not capable to have the part alone compliance plcs <laughs> so in that case what we have to do we have to do the risk assessment then there should be a hybrid systems i think i am running out of time i think it's all almost 11 and we have the only 30 minutes and i will just go fast in that because we have question answer also so uh, how to do this like uh, sustainable challenge is before you can go i mean uh, i just heard you say about the time so your presentation is really good i am getting very good comments people are liking your presentation so please go ahead and present the way we want if we want we can extend by 5 10 minutes thank you thank you everybody so i mentioned about the people process technology i am a fan of that uh, but what we need to do like sustainability in challenges like culture of quality big word right culture of quality whether it comes overnight there is a phrase you cannot become saint overnight you have to practice this same way here the culture of quality has to be built it has to be practiced for which you have to identify where you are and how to improve in that so in the culture of quality <coughs> whether is a intentional human error like lack of personal integrity and honesty so in the world it says like that 90% people are honest good integral having integrity 10% people are having their own issues so same thing must be in our pharma company then poor attitude towards a problem attitude of blaming so these are the common problem which we must be facing lethargic behavior or do or to correct the errors so these are the culture the intentional human error which because of this it is happening so how can we can eliminate those so eliminate mindset of personal gain and self interest eliminate those things from the people who are having this attitude follow work ethics and moral principles say these are the jargons i i know that it is not easy but you have to do that otherwise if you don't do this your one of the pillar is weak you will not able to build your <clears throat> data integrity framework and the culture of the data integrity in your system so you have the poor governance structure into the quality culture like institutional bad habits inappropriate behavior by the management everybody must be facing this issue right like middle management supervisor managers use the abuse word give the pressure to the operator the poor operator is doing the work that's why i mentioned about top down and bottom up uh, the <clears throat> path Culture not supported for idea generation and recognition. I am operator. I am a man, uh, 
because I do work day in day out on the floor. I am the supervisor. I work and I supervise there. I have the good idea to overcome. I go to my manager. Manager just ignore that or give the bad work and mention go and do your work. I know my job. Lack of transparency in investigations. A hierarchy that doesn't enable the employee to make correct decisions. So there are hierarchy. There are layers. So. My suggestions go to my supervisor. My supervisor go to the my manager. Manager go to the the quality management team, and then everything gets distorted. So a hierarchy doesn't enable employee to make correct decisions, and then decisions are wrong because the uh, people managers are not going on the floor. They depend on the whatever they heard about, and uh, it has given the wrong. And then wrong decisions may lead to may may lead to the wrong debt. And data and then internet issues, work pressure, panic, stress, and fatigue. So, this is a common problem everywhere. Lack of recognition. I do good job, but I never have the recognition. People mention this is your job, you do your job. <clears throat> fear of the bad appraisal and report failures. There is a fear factor which is big in our pharma industry, especially in India. Our Indian culture is like that. Like uh, when the operator is there, and when uh, suppose I go there, the operator wants to speak because of the, my respect or my position, they they cannot speak. So what we have done, uh, that is very interesting. I will share with you. So I am the head of the quality, and then my colleague uh, Mr. Prashant is head of operation. What we have done, we have put the various signages in across the company, across the plant, across in the each function. Please speak up. So there is a board called speak up. And then I mentioned we mentioned don't fear, speak up. And we are given our mobile numbers. So we train the, those guys that wherever you think that you are facing you are finding something which is not as per the process in procedure or somebody use the abuse word or somebody is pressurizing you please call us and manual we are getting when we have started this program we are getting huge number of calls and it's not that we are not addressing because if you don't address we lose their confidence they believe it is just just the display but we act on that status gaining the confidence started counseling the people who are working on this and then ultimately we have reached at a certain level. So uh, I mentioned that like structure quality culture transformation program, uh, we have created uh, our program called Crest quality enhancement through sustainable transformation. Uh, this is a quality culture transformation program. Define code of conduct data integrity. We have the quality pledge that uh, Every uh, all the new employees to take the quality pledge, and then uh, every year with the GMP training, the quality pledge has to be uh, uh, retaken. Something. All these are the ideas which I'm sharing with you. You can do your own ideas to improve your the culture of the quality. Remove the fear, speak ups. All these will help you definitely into the controlling the data integrity in the cultural aspect point of view. One big word I have mentioned here user friendly environment work culture and open door culture please please ensure this is a big ticket item if you achieve something you will able to achieve majority of your, one of the big milestone and the pillar another i mentioned about the complexity uh, challenges like complex system procedure and inappropriate design i given the example about the batch record design Unrealistic SOPs and procedure. People are sitting on the table and preparing the SOP without involving the actual doer. Please don't do that. Involve your doer, involve your supervisor, involve your operator in designing the SOPs. Complex document handling systems. <laughs> this, this is a very big. Here, everybody wants to prove their worth. I am an operator. Because of the some problem, uh, my logbook, uh, there is some spillage. I want to have the additional page. What happened? 
I need I need to go to the my supervisor. I have to prepare the deviation. In the deviation, I have to prepare the justification. I go to QA. QA is having their own mindsets. They mention why it's done. Thousand question ask. Then <clears throat> uh, they issue the form. They ask for the impact assessment. They ask for the original document. So it becomes so complex and bureaucratic that for the uh, one poor form has to be issued, the one poor operator spend almost one full day. Think in that line, simplify your process. So what is the governance, the complex governance, manpower constraints, like one person looks up at multiple areas in manufacturing. I mentioned that, like in the, especially in the APIs, Supervisor, there are three floors like a workup floor and the reaction floor, workup floor, and clean rooms. One, one supervisor is here, going here and there. So, think in the like whether he is capable to do their job appropriately as per the GDP and as per GMP or not. Multiple doors involved in the activity are not reflected on the document because of design issues. I explained that about BMR. Please ensure that your BMR is designed in a such a way that that if there are multiple activities or multiple <coughs> parallel activities are happening, please separate out the BMR in a way that you can issue that BMR pages to the people who are doing that activity so that contemporaneous entry can be done. Too complex and lengthy design of batch records. This is a common problem across industry. What happened? that because one FDA, one fine morning, one FDA comes and they mention you don't have in this in your BMR. Another FDA comes then regular says you don't have this in the BMR. Some kappa has taken the kappa impact BMR, you correct in BMR. So in doing so, it becomes so complex that your batch record become a 200 page. And if you count the number of signatures overall, it's 10,000 signatures. So, you think that this 200 pages or 10,000 signature, you will have the 100% perfect? It's not possible, right? Think in that line. Think that way, that okay, how to improve your batch record where meaningful data are there. So that your contemporaneous entry, accurate, your uh, uh, availability, all these problems can be solved. Not only batch record, also the quality control document, also the formats, or the form cleaning logs, instrument logs, your equipment logs, think and like. You, uh, there is called as the HER format. Uh, I don't remember the full form, but there is a form called HER format. In that, uh, there is a sign signatures and there is a signages. So that forms give you the clarity to the supervisor. Like you want to write, uh, today is at 12, 7 2020 to so box are given seven or eight box are given so people will not forget to write and they have to fill the entire boxes so likewise give them the box to fill yes no to fill not applicable to fill rather than giving the explanatory notes give the arrow marks give the hand design you to write here so all these are giving then take the photograph in the cleaning rocks take the photographs and error mark this, because this portion is critical to clean. So all these will help you in improving your documentation system, improving, improving your GDP by improving your data integrity ultimately. In the computer systems, <coughs> it's a big word, right? Uh, as I mentioned that the IT has gone long way from uh, uh, just the HPLC now uh, it has gone to the almost to the HMIs and the controls across. So in this uh, software are not fully parted on compliance. What are the problems? Improper computer system validation, no risk assessment done. Then shared logins, generic IDs, inadequate backup procedures, role-based privilege metrics not defined. Security storage drives are accessible to users. So these are the common problems in data integrity in particular and compliance in computer system. So the, uh, focus on these activities, lack of audit trails. So how to overcome this, like assessment of particular and compliance requirement before document. What we have done in, the, in our company, our, our purchase order are having the one provision 
that whether it is manufacturing equipment, whether it is engineering equipment, whether it is a clean utility equipment, whether it is a quality control equipment, whichever the equipment or instrument which is involved into GMP directly, indirectly, and that purchase order, there is a provision that it has to be a party of compliance. In our URS also, we mentioned is and the, whatever party of compliance prerequisite which we have mentioned. So you think in that line, you can do like that. You should have the well-defined computer system relation master plan. Then you should do the quality risk assessment, uh, data integrity risk assessment. Then uh, SS management, password management, I have already explained. Then proper backup system. You have lock and key about your drives, which is not accessible to everybody. And then application to the desktop policy. I explained what is the meaning of desktop policy to your GMP computer. So, uh, I explain electronic data not saved in case of interruptions power. These are the poor uh, design issues. And then one of the classic example, and then uh, many auditors now they have learned when people are doing this mind well, that uh, when the run is going on, they know that okay, something has gone, they remove the power plug and then they put there. So remove the power plug, everything has gone you cannot identify so people are that smart that remove the power plug and then power plug in an auditor is smarter than us so now they have gone into not uh, into the auditor of the system they have gone into the auditor of the windows auditor of the computer whether they have done the power plug or not. so mine will don't try to do anything which you think we are smart people are smarter than us I explained third party service provider suppliers, which is a, currently is the untouch area. We have done the good work in our um, companies. Ensure that okay, your third party vendor, service provider and suppliers, they follow your own systems. They are capable to manage the good document practices. They are able to manage the uh, data integrity, they are managed to provide you the consistent manpower because they have the people are repeatedly change. Somebody is doing the HEPA filter integrity test. One day is one person, second day is another person. Somebody is doing the coming for calibration one day, one person, somebody other person. Those are people are not trained. They write into the unauthorized documents, then they transfer data. So many things are happening. So please ensure that your vendors, service providers, suppliers are being trained with your SOPs. We are doing the regular training to those people. We also ensure, and now what we are doing, uh, which is very interesting, that we will qualify their uh, people. We will give them the XX card, and then it will be linked with our SAP. The person who are not qualified, will not have the access to come into our systems that they will not access to come to our uh, instrument or uh, procedures. So think of that line, you do like that, and it, do, it can improve your data integrity as well. So these are the something about the sustainability on what we can do, uh, I have explained. So what is, uh, how, how it can be done? So there has to be some framework, there has to be some procedures, there has to be some thinking. As I mentioned that just putting the computer is not data integrity and the data integrity and encompassed so many things like building a culture of quality. I explained training and awareness, BI process design, technology and IT systems, risk assessment and mitigation and management system and reviews. So this is the entire framework on which your data integrity for procedures and policies should be built on. So it's not simple. It has taken uh, over the four years to build all this. I'm not saying that you're gonna do that, you must have done uh, more than us what we have done, but I just try to touch base here that what we have done to <clears throat> go for that data integrity framework to build the data integrity culture and processes. As I mentioned, uh, like uh, here, like quality metrics uh, is just not the data integrity. There are 
so many things uh, under the sea, uh, under the mind. Fear, unbias, retaliations, work management, metaphysics, complexity, complex systems, the recognition and awards, approachable pressure. There are so many things which we need to work on by which we can build the quality on those. Some of the things which I already built on these, I will not go because of the time constraints. Like I mentioned, periodic survey, Gemba works, idea collection and extract executions, theme-based training in uh, daily dialogues and awareness. <clears throat> you will not believe we have the uh, system. This is my the quest program uh, which I'm presenting here. We have the daily dialogue. In this daily dialogue, this is a 15 to 20 minute before starting the new work. We have the uh, quest circle, means quality culture group circles, where 80 to 90 people come together at uh, quest corner. We have created the corner in that, where every day morning we done the daily dialogues about what's going on in that function. We give them the visibility. We give them the procedures. We discuss their ideas. We discuss that what are the ideas have been put, what are the ideas cannot be put, how we can improve. So, so many things we have tried to do uh, to build the culture and wherein data integrity is one of the main pillar on those. Base practices, campaigns, theme-based trainings, periodic culture program meetings. So there are many things which we have done to build the culture, to improve the mindset of the people. And then, uh, as I mentioned, we have put the uh, signages everywhere across. If you come to our sites, there are huge signages about the culture, huge signages about the data integrity, huge signages about the GDPs, so that people are everywhere you can see the uh, good practices signages. One thing, uh, we have to be very, very uh, innovative, which what we have done, we have created our own videos and we call it a QTV, this quality TV. We have displayed the quality TV across the Jidas. And then we are continuously done the, we have created almost 200, 300 videos about the group practices. We are, we have created our own uh, cartoon, Chaka and Baka. Chaka is doing wrong thing, Baka is correcting him. So all these innovative ideas which you have created to build the quality culture in our systems. We also uh, do the, something very differently. Why we are doing uh, uh, this, you know that we need to engage our people. So uh, every day we do daily dialogues. When one five morning we start boring, it become routine, it become monotonous. So if you uh, avoid those things, we need to engage them. To engage them, we do the street plays, like Nukkar Nataks. We do the waste melas in the Diwalis. Into the, we provided the bus services. In the bus services, we do the play in the bus. We give them the, uh, this, uh, creating the awareness program. We create the quiz, and then we give the acknowledgement uh, about the best practices. So these are the few examples. I am sharing with you, which can be thought of, you can do in your own organization to build the quality culture and to build the data integrity frameworks. These are some of the trainings which we have done, basic of data integrity, role-based training about data integrity of the cryptography, microbiology, production chemists, electronic data management, audit review, paper data review. So these are the role-based trainings we have provided, good document practices which I have explained about what are the good document practices, do's and don'ts with the paper and electronic data, measure of prevent and delete data integrity breaches of paper and electronic data. These are the role-based trainings which we have created. Those are the videos also, those are the classroom also, and these are the on the job also. So in the, uh, some of the things which I have already uh, captured here, like paper-based uh, systems, like design excellent, Excellence through process simplification and modification that support data BI requirement. I have already discussed with you that simplify your process, please. That is my really, really uh, the big ticket item for you. Simplify your process. Think that where my process is complex, where my process is bureaucratic, 
where is there are so many layers are there think at that line can simplify those things make the process simple to understand and, and execute sequential data recording as for the process no manual issues try to avoid the manual issues if it is not for the small companies issue the uh, issues has to be uh, simplified like electronic uh, systems like computer system security controls technology it controls system validation as per csvmp complaint complaint is a part 11 complies and you have next 11 audit trails shall have who when why what of the changes addition and deletions data originally to be remain intact in case of interruption failure or intervention then uh, there we are also not 100 percent electronic we have the hybrid systems if you have the hybrid system then what you should do so you should have the additional procedure controls where traceability of the data is not available as i mentioned uh, many of the equipments are not generating the uh, data um, which can be archived like tls uh, like uh, calfe server where the titration then there has to be a doer checker there generally we take the photograph of the endpoints and then we keep those things then uh, define primary data uh, like paper and electronic and systemic plan for upgrade hybrid system to fully computer system is a uh, is a capex is a cost it's not possible when you have to uh, see that your paper system is simplified and then you have the overall control over that you, you have to do the risk assessment about paper systems and uh, mitigate those uh, risks Electronic system, I already managed, uh, mentioned about the party loan compliance. Independent IT person who is the administrator, and then uh, the password management, LRM management will be done by them. In the hybrid system, I have already explained about this here. Whether I'm good in the time or I can. Uday? Yeah, yeah. No, no, you can uh, uh, you take another maybe five, 10 minutes and then we'll extend the session by another 10, 15 minutes so that few questions we can answer. But we have got so many compliments that, you know, you're giving such down to earth practical things and uh, the presentation speaks about your 30 years of experience. So your presentation is really appreciated by more than 450 to 500 people. So maybe, you know, we will extend for another 10 minutes and then extend the entire webinar by 10 to 15 minutes so that you can answer a few of the questions, if that is okay with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So another framework, as I mentioned about technology and IT systems, so key enables to embed data integrity into product lifecycle. It is a systemic IT system rollout and upgradation plan. As I mentioned that uh, IT has gone long way to support into the data integrity. It has started with the quality control. Now it has reached to the manufacturing. I, people are aware about quality control. People are aware, uh, aware about the server-based chromatographic systems. Like Votas, uh, Chromalin, then other uh, then LIMS programs then uh, non chromatographic system ecm program pool data archiving of data electronic signatures then password protections then uh, electronic data reviews no paper then worksheets electronic worksheets integration from the uh, in, uh, instruments data coming from the instruments uh, uh, into directly to the limbs there are long way I, uh, we have gone and it has helped us there now focus is on more into the manufacturing and then the clean services like uh, clean stem pure stem uh, water for injections nitrogen compressor so these are all the clean um, utilities so we are now an auditor started focusing more into the clean utilities how you are controlling your hmi or scada and then the manufacturing equipment whether your manufacturing equipment is a part uh, scada or hmi is part one compliance whether data is capturing from the system it goes to the historian if it is not then 
the data which are generated, which are primary data, let's say the endpoint or the RPM of the compression machine or the hydraulic pressure of the compression machine or ejection force or the force feeder RPM, all these uh, CPPs which are generated into the manufacturing equipment, which are the primary data, how it is captured into the uh, your SCADA system or HMI or your PLC. And then whether you have the audit trail in that, any intervention done by the operator, whether that interventions have been recorded, any critical alarms which are generated are acknowledged. If it is acknowledged, then how impact assessment is done. Whether you have classified your alarms uh, into the, your HMA, because there are thousands of alarms. One is, there may be safety alarms, there may be electronic alarms, there may be other. So whether you have classified your alarms to the GMP alarms, the critical or major, and whether those alarms have been maintained, um, monitored as a part of the batch record reviews, whether you have audit trail, whether any intervention done by the operator to set the machine, whether it has been recognized, acknowledged, and the impact assessment done. So, so and so forth. Uh, uh, now, other than the QC, the auditors have started focusing more into the HMI of the manufacturing. Please start focusing on or on your all the manufacturing equipments of the SCADAs. Specific consideration to hybrid system and computer systems. Then computer system validation master plans, defined computer system access management, backup and restoration, electronic data. So these are the framework. So please focus here. These are the uh, something new which you have to look into this. Backup and restoration of electronic data, restriction of data storage drives, define password policy requirement, define data file nomenclature procedures, electronic signatures, audit trail containing all details, define data storage path, define electronic data and audit trail review procedures, define data archivals, periodic review of GXC computerized application, upgradation of non compliance partial. So this is a framework which we need to work on those. These are the risk assessment, which I already mentioned about that uh, you have to do your risk assessment. What might probably go wrong can impact of integrity of the data. Alcoa plus base questions. Like uh, each definition, which we have mentioned, Alcoa plus and Alcoa CCE here. Each definition, you ask the question, where is the risk? If there is a risk, how you will mitigate the risk? You can use the RPN number, you can use the risk control, you can risk the review. I can give you an example about the paper based risk assessment. Issue, issuance of the cleaning log. Now you prepare entire workflow, the generation of the cleaning log, archival of the cleaning log, issuance of the cleaning log, filling of the cleaning log and then coming back the field document cleaning log. Entire path you put in the workflow. In that workflow, you put the job description about who is doing what. In that job description, you identify where the things go wrong. So in the, where the things go wrong, whether your form is complex, whether form is having possibly GDP errors, whether form can be du duplicated, whether form uh, is uh, uh, not available, is lost. All these questions, I'm giving one example you can do for all other uh, Alcoa Plus examples. And then you try to mitigate. I will give you an example for the loose form at Zydus. We have created the watermark in the Zydus in a way, and that is a color watermark and uh, front and uh, back in the perfectly integrated way so somebody want to take the photocopy of the what uh, the page in the color printer they cannot do that so this is how we have mitigated our loose forms thing in that line try to do that so do the risk assessment of your paper system <coughs> paper systems do uh, risk assessment of your hybrid system and do the risk assessment about your electronic system, which I've already touched base about the risk. 
happen, please do the risk assessment of entire processes of the data integrity point of view risk assessment. Risk assessment can be done for the product, for the quality, for the availability, <clears throat> for the compliance. And please do the risk assessment for the data integrity point of view where the risk is embedded into the process in the systems which we have to mitigate. Risk assessment also is done for your behavioral aspect also. Human factor analysis is done into your investigation, wherein I explained about the mindset, fear factor, and so on and so forth, is considered and you have to mitigate those risks by developing the culture. The responsibility of the senior management, uh, I explained that is a top down and bottom up. So what is the responsibility? Establishment and implementation of effective quality system and procedures. Allocate sufficient resources. Periodic management review meeting, uh, uh, discuss progress, hurdles, outcome of DI initiatives. Encourage cultural support in DI deployment. Create fearless and open work environment and encourage open door inputs. According to me, you just take this uh, directly into your system and provide to your management. If you are management, please practice this. Ensuring that staff are not subject to commercial, financial, and other pressure on conflict of interest. Taking appropriate discip disciplinary actions on employee for unethical conduct or detainability. Please don't fear in taking the action on the employee. Many times, People think we are calling it or what will happen if we remove that person. He is he is having a lot of uh, our internal aspect. He can become a whistleblower. What will happen? Don't fear. If you are good in your data integrity, then why to fear? Just remove that person because that person can spoil other people also. It's like COVID, right? So don't fear. Remove that person from the system. What we have done, uh, we have done the SME, subject matter expert data integrity cell. You can think in that line in, at your facility also. So this is, they are not, nothing but they are the subject matter expert. They are doing day in and day out this activity only. So if you uh, give some some of the activities to the QA, some of the activities to manufacturing, it become a, a, uh, one of the activity that it may not be focused. So please try to create the subject matter expert dedicated integrity cell. So they are continuously doing this day and day out activity about the Gemba rounds, audits, reviews of the system, review, review of the audit trails, review of the computer systems, review of the SMIs, review of LRMs. Continuously they are doing, they are based at the sites. BI shall sell directly report to, and what we have done, they are directly reporting to senior management and shall have no interest in GMP process with business perspective. So this is what we have done to achieve the data integrity. So these ISP themselves has mentioned about the maturity stage about data integrity. I don't want to go, people have heard, read about this, but Classifying following into maturity mapping levels like behavioral process, procedural controls, and technical control. As I mentioned, I'm a fan of people, process, and technology. ISP is mentioned the same thing here. I think uh, I've tried to share whatever I've done or learned from over the several years of my. So thank you very much. And then uh, thank you, Udai, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, everybody, to give me the opportunity. I will share something what I have done that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vipul. Excellent presentation. Going into so many details. And you know, it really spoke about the experience which you have. And you're speaking so passionately from your heart and sharing your experience. And everyone has appreciated. I got hundreds of comments complimenting thank you for an ex excellent presentation. And uh, there are several questions, but most of them you have touched upon. So there are a few, you yeah. know, we'll take few questions uh, which are there. One is what is what is your view, you know, on uh, cloud systems? 
do you have experience and any special precautions to be taken if your data is in cloud from data integrity point of view from control point of view from administration point of view so frankly speaking we have not got to go up to the cloud level yet because okay. of, we have not yet validated uh, on the cloud systems uh, cloud is been given by somebody you don't have your own control on this some way sometimes cloud is removed and everything is gone so uh, cloud is a new era uh, which we need to really uh, practice on those things and then we have to build but currently uh, me and my company we have not gone to the cloud level we have tried to avoid to the cloud and we have tried to the our own server based systems thank you thank you that's that's great uh, great input uh, then the second second question has uh, come about is you know uh, standalone systems you know which are not integrated there are several questions on that you did mention uh, how those are to be handled but once again if you could briefly say because there are several questions on the standalone systems which are not connected to any server or any systems you know where you have to take manual reading like ph meter carl fisher and so on uh, so uh, i know you have ad uh, addressed this in quite detail but a few a few points again if you could say because there are several questions on that so standalone or non chromatographic systems uh, is a good question uh, thank you for asking that uh, it is a focus area for the uh, auditors like uh, uh, ir uv uh, carl fisher or um, metal uh, other uh, colometer so something uh, what we have done uh, it is hooked up to the ecm so uh, uh, it is uh, uh, document uh, systems and then also it is hooked up with, with uh, their own server so standalone uh, uh, equipment are hooked up with their own server and then uh, electronic signatures has been provided to that so data which are generated on this is full uh, with the help of the cma into the main server but uh, till that time it is full it is uh, remain into the server and then uh, the electronic signatures are provided to that so in, uh, instead of having the gromulin and all this which is not possible uh, each instruments are having uh, its own server like uh, ir uv uh, and like uh, lab solution is one of them then uh, other uh, metal based uh, server are one of those people are hooked up to the server like ph meter and balance uh, where uh, uh, what we have done we have logged the date and time uh, and then we have provided the passwords and then now ph meter and balances are directly hooked up to the limbs so uh, once uh, you take the ph and enter it data directly go into the limbs rather than we take the prints and the balances also once you enter into the balance it, the data goes into the limbs directly so there are no intermittent and then the primary data goes into lens for the calculation thank so you non chromatographic systems standalone systems are hooked up with their own servers good at the control uh, you spoke about manual integration saying that you know uh, try to avoid ma manual integration as much as possible uh, but the question is there are some things where manual integration may be required so how how do you you know go ahead with that can that be justified to the auditors so what we do that uh, the once you prepare your integration uh, program uh, integration uh, parameter you run that and then you identify that there there is a possibility about the uh, some uh, harm of peak type of things then you zoom it out but still you want to do the manual integration then uh, you uh, we have the uh, form for the PDF. So all these data are been remain into the systems where you have integrated that uh, uh, zoom it out and all data is remain into the systems uh, for the review. Then uh, there is a form uh, that form is filled that uh, what manual integration is uh, why manual integration is required. Then uh, you uh, do the manual integration and then you do the calculation. Then, uh, the calculation which is done with the manual integration and then calculation is done with the original integration you do the comparison and then you take the uh, assessment about manual integration is fail or pass so uh, you have to take the judgment based on manual integration if the impurity is uh, uh, manually integrated 
and, and then it is failing and then in the normal degradation it is passing then you fail the batch so don't try to do other way around so manual integration is not avoided i agree but you have to fill the form and, and prepare the justification report do enter calculation see the data which is generated compare with the normal integration and take the judgment based on your manual integration thank you thank you that's a very comprehensive answer uh then again you spoke about you know password should not be shared but there are some places where group password is required uh, like for example plcs or hmi system is that allowed so uh, i agree uh, in that case like this is a, what we have done we have uh, called as a level 1 level 2 uh, <clears throat> plcs or hmis um, which are the old version of the hmi or the plcs the scada is uh, they, in the scada in the new uh, version of the scada is new age of the scada there are no group password but old machine there are group password so in that case what we have done we have create the form so that form is create uh, fill uh, you have to enter the group password but then that form will be filled by the operator and then that operator will fill the form uh, that when you uh, he has done the login with the which password he has run the login which activity he will start what type of intervention he will do during uh, his tenure about uh, uh, the operation or about that shift like uh, he has to do the machine adjustment from rpm change or hardness change or uh, something change then he will mention about it that intervention and then when he will logged out he will put that when he has logged out and then uh, uh, that form will be complete in the same password now the next operator will come then he will fill in the same form about what is his role number uh, or code number what is his name when he is logged in when he is uh, what activity is done what intervention is done when he is logged out so that is how the group password is been managed great Thankfully. great thank you really practical way out correct uh, uh th this is about retention period uh you know could you just comment on what should be the retention period for electronic data and paper based data for the uh, drug manufacturing and pharmaceutical industry so there are various uh, uh but generally different companies different sops like batch record uh, generally is uh, one year after expiry or some gmp document it is 15 years or uh, some validation document is 10 years some electronic data or hard drives uh, that uh, these are kept uh, uh, till the similar type of paper uh, document but one thing uh, one has to be careful about if you are reti retiring your equipment you have to remove the primary data hard disk and then you have to retain into the archival room for the uh, policy what you have prepared generally uh, the other than batch record the supporting document like logbooks validation documents other data which is not directly linked with the manufacturing are retained for the 10 years or 15 years based on the policy and the hard drives of the retired equipment also have been written like that great great thank you so there are several questions i am you know we will not be able to answer all of them so i will take the last two questions now because you know it's uh, you have spent so much time uh, giving this presentation and it has almost answered all so last two questions we'll take uh, you know this is about uh, you know you spoke about having all the details for a shredder and you know incineration of documents now this alok uh, alcoa plus does it really require to have traceability in case of shredding of document destruction of document and incineration of document or this is something plus which your company is doing see this is the availability of the data right now the retired document which you want to uh, shred that is no part of this but the data which are generated like uh, some of the data which is generated like uh, we'll give you example about the 
draft copy or some of the data which is not um, properly print or not properly done or some data where there is a calculation or some data which are the draft so other than the draft data which are the original data these are this cannot be destroyed it has to be kept with the uh, archive where the data and calculation is generated or some signatures are already done you cannot destroy but draft document which you are generating suppose you have uh, some of the papers some of the labels which are not required to be done some of the duplicate paper which is generated um, from the printer those data are being uh, uh, required to shred and uh, now this is something additional which is done based on our learning and 483s which we have seen in the industries that if the auditor sees that okay, there is a shredding of the paper they will ask that okay, and they will doubt and there is a direct data integrity that okay, you have shredded the authorized documents or the some documents which is not to be shredded so to give them the assurance that the data which are shredded is not having the impact on the quality uh, says pq of the product uh, safety and efficacy of the product we have created these uh, systems to ensure and give the confidence to the auditor that the uh, papers which are shredded are the paper which are not having any original data or primary data great thank you thank you so much so we'll take the last question now uh, you said that you know about multiple activities you have to be careful you know and when you are designing the batch records and other things so the question is can a person do multiple activities if it is possible so for example if uh, autoclave is running it has a, a cycle of 20 minutes 30 minutes or the whole cycle goes more than that so during that time somebody can review the data or do some periodic review or plotting of other things will this be okay doing simultaneously 100 percent okay <clears throat> yeah person will never be remain seated in that time so during that time uh, if uh, the activity is going on uh, about the autoclave which is uh, under the sterilization where that person will do the uh, some other activity so uh, uh, your format has to be designed in such a way that it is to be mentioned that uh, during that time of this uh, holding period what activity is doing uh, in parallel so there is nothing wrong in that from your format and then uh, explanation in design in a way that you can able to explain that okay, this parallel activity is done what we have done that we have put the remark column in that in that um, uh, operator mentioned that during this uh, holding time he has done this activity and then that activity is traceable to the activity that which he has done Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So with this, we will stop the webinar here. Uh, so thank you so much for supporting ISP India and giving such an excellent presentation. And before we close down the webinar, I will again hand it over to you to say last few lines to uh, the delegates who have really appreciated your presentation. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to me. I will try to share whatever we have done and uh, uh, i hope that it will be helpful for you to do this this uh, presentation may be available i don't know who they may give you the presentation it's not uh, secret you can take out some of the examples and build on your system and improve on your systems is difficult but it's not uh, impossible so if you have the willingness to do this you will 100 percent able to do that uh, there are a lot of publications there are a lot of uh, references but practicality is different than the theories. So whatever I have presented to you, that is all based on my practical knowledge and whatever based what we have done in our companies, I will try to share with you. So thank you very much again and uh, hope to see you again someday in some other seminar. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. So delegates, thank you very much for attending this.